It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Are you at a point in your life where you're questioning everything? Your marriage and friendships, your work, your purpose? Do you have an inner voice that keeps telling you that it's time to pay attention to your life? Today's guest, Cheryl Richardson, has toured the world, empowering others to make lasting change. But when her life no longer worked as it once had, she knew that it was time to uncover what really mattered. In her new book, Waking Up in Winter, Cheryl provides an account of how she found a renewed purpose through an inward journey. Cheryl is a New York Times bestselling author of several books. Her work has been covered in media, including The Today Show, The New York Times, and O Magazine. She was a team leader for the Lifestyle Makeover series on The Oprah Winfrey show and she accompanied Oprah on the live your best life tour welcome Cheryl thanks for joining us thank you Joan I'm glad to be here Cheryl I'm so happy to have this conversation with you because what you experienced is something that many of us experience I know I did when I hit midlife everything I knew changed but for me it happened through death divorce and self-evaluation what was going on in your life that caused you to pause and examine your path well you know it's it's funny I was at a point in my career that a lot of people would look at and think, wow, she's really lucky and she must be incredibly happy. I mean, I was very busy. I was traveling a lot. I was doing a lot of speaking. I was on a a speaking tour in London. I was actually doing four major cities in different countries and I was just getting really tired. And um, I had one of those, I guess I was going through an experience that I think a lot of people do go through where they work very hard to achieve a certain level of success or to get to a certain place in life. And then you arrive there and you think, wow, this is great. I've, I've made it. It's, it's wonderful to be here. You enjoy it for a while, but then you start to question where you are. And this could be true in a marriage, you know, built, growing a family, growing a business of your own. So I really just reached a point where I was emotionally, physically, and spiritually tired. But I wasn't really allowing myself to look at that because I thought, my goodness, I'm living a really great life. How blessed am I to be able to travel and to teach and to do work I love and to write books? And um, I can't, you know, who am I to question that at this point? And I've spent so many years working to get to this point. What the heck would I do if I wasn't doing this? And so like a lot of people, I just kind of kept going through the motions. And then I just reached a point where I was tired of being away from home, being away from my husband. And I just realized things needed to change. And it it wasn't a big wake up call like we often get and like I've certainly received in my life in the past. It was more this kind of quiet, slow burning, unsettled feeling about the life that I was living. And I think the big, you know, the thing that really made me finally stop and say, okay, I got to really reevaluate this was entering my early 50s. Because, you know, at that point, as you know, Joan, you reach that point and it's like, okay, I'm, I'm getting closer to the finish line than the starting line. And I've got a limited amount of time here and I better make damn sure I'm happy with what I'm doing. What you're talking about, I went through something very similar. For me, it was in my middle 40s and my 23-year marriage ended. I had devoted my entire being to raising my two children and to making sure that my husband was happy. And to the outside, it looked like everything was perfect, like we had this great life. But inside, I experienced low self-esteem. I felt like I wasn't worthy. I knew that I couldn't continue that way, that something had to change. But when I tried to reclaim who I was, my marriage ended. And at the same time that my marriage was ending, my mother and sister passed away. And that thrust me into this really dark place. But the point is that no matter what we're going through, when we go within, when we look inside, we can find the strength to emerge stronger, to emerge a whole person. Yeah, I think that, you know, what you're talking about is I think think that there are periods in life where we realize that our insides aren't up to the task of the kind of life that we want to live, that there's some growing we need to do. And I'm very fortunate that that happened to me at a young age. At the age of 19, I hired my first therapist. This was many years ago. Mm-hmm. So it, it wasn't a popular decision. But I knew that I, I knew that I did have low self-esteem and that I wasn't living the life I wanted to live, but I didn't know how to make changes. I didn't feel confident enough, courageous enough. I didn't feel worthy enough. And so I hired a therapist early on 
one. And um, really, I found a wonderful therapist, which I think makes a huge difference. And she really essentially introduced me to the idea of working in partnership with someone on my own inner growth in a way that was really fulfilling and um, successful. You know, like it, 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 it showed results in my everyday outer world. And so I'd always been somebody from that point on who was checking under the hood and was really committed to my own growth. And I think that much like you said, there are certain points in life where if you don't look in the mirror and say, okay, you know, do I feel worthy of being satisfied in life? Am I paying attention to my soul? Do I even know that I am a soul? (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. Um, then sometimes the hero's journey really is about taking on your own emotional, physical, and spiritual growth. Other times later in life, like for me, I had taken on that inner work. And I think it was the commitment to the inner work that allowed me to reach a point where I realized, you know what, I need to be true to my soul. Even if I've arrived at the life I thought I wanted, if it doesn't feel right, excuse me, I need to be true to my soul and I need to be willing to explore what's going on and to start reevaluating everything. So we all reach different points like that. And I'm so sorry to hear about and that's That's what I call, and I refer to this in the book as cosmic rug pulling, when your marriage is in trouble and then you have two significant losses at the same time. That's a big challenge to take on. And it must have been really a dark period. And then look at where you are now, right? You took it on. And, and this I is the result of is, that. This is because mm-hmm. of that. And so yeah. when you go through those challenges or when you make that self-evaluation or you begin that inward journey, you can really arrive at amazing places. But the first yeah. thing you need to figure out is what it is you want, where you, know, where you want to go. And, and, and you present questions that can help us with a midlife introspection. And one of the questions that you ask, which I think is so important, is if your life were to end today, what would you regret? I think being able to answer that question alone can help us make the shift. Yes, and it's not just a bucket list kind of question in terms of what would you regret not having done, although that can be important. Uh, Who would you regret not having become? What qualities of character or or how how do I feel like I want to approach life differently? And there were some things that I discovered that were really important, like losing a certain amount of self-consciousness I felt I had so I could be bolder with my choices, being less defended and more open to life and more open to people. And those kinds of, I guess, inner bucket list items really do reflect the inner adventure that I've always been deeply committed to and, and frankly, much more interested in than what I could do in the outer world and much more interested in who I am and how how frequently I can remember that I am a soul in a physical body and that I'm here to fully experience life. I'm not here to conquer it or to accomplish. I'm here to experience life, to let life flow through me instead of getting caught up in the craziness. I think nowadays it's very easy for us to assume that, you know, you said something about from the outside, everybody would have looked at you and thought, oh, I'm a mom. I've got this family. Everything's great. I think a lot of us make that assumption, especially because of social media. We're usually only seeing what's wonderful about people's lives. Uh, it's usually really the highlight, the highlights of our lives that we see. And so it's so easy for us to feel like we're not entitled to question the direction that we're headed in or where we are, or there's something wrong with us because, you know, we're not happy with what we have. It's not even about happy. It's about, it's about searching for a deeply meaningful life. And that is a life that is directed by the soul, not by the ego and not certainly by the head. Cheryl, you've been doing this for a long time. Why do you believe we resist doing what we know will nourish our soul? Do you believe it's the fear of the unknown? I have been working with people for a very long time. And the the thing that I do know is that when we choose to live an examined life, when we engage in activities that really, whether it's doing therapy, journaling, you know, being a part of a support group where people get together and tell the truth about what's working and what isn't working, when we have the right kind of support, when we meditate on a regular basis, you know, engage in activities that honor the inner life, that honor ourselves as souls, life begins to work. And it doesn't mean that it's all kittens and roses and, you know, cotton candy at all. It means because to be in human form, I think, is to to face the reality that we're going to suffer. Life, we are going to lose people we love. We're going to lose things that we love. We're going to feel pain. But the question is how well you're able to move through those experiences and maintain your own sense of spiritual integrity. And so I think that the more we get support and engage in activities that really honor the inner life, the more motivated we are to make the kinds of changes we need to make. And that's why I wrote this book. That's why I chose to do this particular book, which is really a departure. You know, my other six books are self-help nonfiction. This one, I reached a point where I thought, you know, 
I pretty much said all I need to say about good self-care and taking care of one's outer life, one's emotional life, and one's spiritual life. You can read all about that in all of my books. And I think I've got really good information about what you can do. And I just felt like I reached a point in my life where I wanted to share with my readers what it actually means to live an examined life, what it means to live a life that honors oneself as a soul, what it means to invest in our own personal work. And what happens as a result of that? And I feel like the story that unfolds in the book really shows people that you can be courageous enough to face life the way it is right now and question what's working and what isn't and go on the hero's journey, which is that period of descent where you know things need to change, but you have no idea in what way or where you're headed. And then you sort of linger in the mystery for a while, just trying to get to know yourself and to connect more deeply with what's important to you. And eventually, if you hang in there long enough and stay in that zone of in between, life shows up for you in a very different way, in a way that's meaningful and fulfilling and rich. And you begin the ascent process of the hero's journey. And when you come out of that process, you're not the same person. You're much more aligned with yourself as a soul instead of a personality. Cheryl, you say that during perimenopause, the interests of our youth come back to be healed and released. Can you explain that to us? What do you mean when you say that the interests of our youth come back to be healed and released? Yeah, so what I say is this was actually something Chris Northrup, Dr. Christian Northrup, who's just a wonderful Mm -hmm. uh, woman's doctor and advocate for women's health. And uh, she said to me once that when we reach a perimenopause, which is before menopause, right, where our hormones are up and down and up and down, much like they are during the period of puberty, uh, very often what will happen is the stuff that was undealt with as an adolescent comes up to be dealt with once again. And that's where things like issues of unworthiness, low self-esteem, fear, self-judgment, feeling sort of bowled over by the inner critical voice. I mean, there's a lot of different things that can come up that need to be healed. Our relationship issues, that's why a lot of people in perimenopause come up against difficulties in their long-term relationships because the soul is always moving towards growth and evolution and healing. And so it's during that perimenopause phase that two things can happen. And this is what Chris talked about, and I experienced this. The roles that you've played that no longer work are going to start to break down and you're going to be invited to, to show up more authentically in your life. And number two, the interests that you had around the time of puberty uh, will begin to reveal themselves again. Right around the time, you know, the interests that we had, like for me, it was I loved nature as a young girl. I loved planting seeds and watching plants grow. I loved animals. I loved singing, being out in the world, being out in nature. And uh, these things were really deeply important to me as a young girl, as a, as a young woman. And so I decided to, instead of just seeing them as just sort of ancillary interests to a full and rich life, I let them take center stage. I spent more time in nature. I started walking every single day. I began to meditate more to spend, you know, my husband and I got uh, rescued a cat from a shelter and I, I had the beautiful opportunity to mother and to be in relationship with this little being. And I start, we moved to a place where we would be out in, in nature and have wildlife show up at our back door. And, um, and I took singing lessons. I took up singing again, just for the sheer joy of singing. And so what I began to see was these early adolescent interests were clues to the things that were important to my soul and my own soul's growth. And so they've become a much more valuable and center stage, centerpiece of my life now as a woman in menopause. And I asked that question, Cheryl, because everything that you just described is exactly what happened to me. Those are the feelings that I had, the feeling of, of being unworthy and of questioning who I was and, and what I was supposed to do. And I think that by just understanding that concept can help so many people, women in particular, transition to the next phase of life. Well, and we need to value, you know, as I started to really look at the interests that were calling to be explored, like singing, for example, as soon as I opened to, wow, maybe I do want to start singing again. Sure enough, the universe provides the perfect singing teacher out of the perfect situation, you know, out of nowhere, suddenly I was told about this great singing teacher. So it's like the divine, you know, rises up to support us when we start paying attention to the soul and to these early desires. So that happened. And then I also had to face the fear of, you know, I'm going to actually go and sing and I'm going to sing in front of somebody. And is this really that important? Like, just like an adolescent who's starting out needing to try new things, I felt like an adolescent taking on new things 
things that I knew were deeply important to me. And I was old enough and mature enough to know that I needed to take them seriously. And at the same time, I had to really face several fears. Showing up and singing in front of somebody was one of the most terrifying things I've ever done. And I've done a lot of scary things. So these are, you know, these are some of the things that we're invited to do. And when we do, we're not the same people afterwards. That's the beauty of it all. We we become more, more fully who we are. And then we show up very differently in the world. The book is Waking Up in Winter in Search of What Really Matters at Midlife by Cheryl Richardson. If you'd like to get more information about Cheryl and her work, you can visit CherylRichardson.com. Cheryl, thank you so much for being here and for talking about the importance of self-examination as we age. Life goes by so quickly and many of us are missing it. This is a wonderful reminder to make the most of the time that we have. So thank you for being here. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Joan. It's wonderful to talk to you again. I know. I'm so happy that you came back on the show. This is Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Stay with us. We'll be right back. for joining us. I hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read our digital magazine, take part in the book club, check out our team, and be sure to follow the show on social media. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.